In this video, you're going to learn how to sell more online using a high converting sales page specifically engineered to turn casual visitors into paying customers and do it without being sleazy or overly aggressive. In fact, this is the same sales page that I've used to launch and sell one of my own online courses, Rainmaker Email Mastery, with great success. Hi, I'm Shaba, founder of Game of Conversions, the place where online entrepreneurs learn how to convert casual leads into profitable and paying customers. And today, you're going to learn my step-by-step -step method for creating awesome sales pages that grab people's attention, build desire for your offering, and get you the sale. Keep watching. All right, everybody, welcome to the Rainmaker Email Mastery sales page. And before we get started, before I go into the nitty gritty details, just I want to clarify something about sales pages. So first of all, what is a sales page? Well, basically, uh, think of it as a page on your website specifically designed to get you the sale. So in other words, specifically designed to get people to take action no matter their circumstances. As you can see, this one is actually quite a beast. It's a really, really long sales page. So this one's also called a long form sales page because as you can see, it's long form. Now, obviously, not everybody has to have a sales page like this. Uh, this is more used in selling um, online courses or something that people need a little bit more warming up to. So if you sell something else, it's no worries if you don't want to use uh, this long type of sales page. However, however, the same things apply. That's for sure. Secondly, why is the sales page so awesome for getting you the sale? In a nutshell, because every single element on it is engineered meticulously to uh, persuade people into buying, to build a desire, to grab attention, to hook people so that they become engaged emotionally and buy your stuff. Nothing else does this more than a dedicated long form sales page. Uh, but the problem is that it's a difficult thing to do. It's one hell of a beast, that's for sure. And that's the reason and the problem why uh, not many people actually use these because A, either they don't have the copywriting experience, you need to have a lot of copywriting experience for this, or B, uh, they're expensive to do with others. However, if you do get yourself one of these, it's going to be an incredible asset for years to come. Maybe it will sell your course for years, you're just running some ads to it and uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, and one more thing before I, I start to dissect this sales page, please keep in mind that in order for this to work and in order for a sales page to be effective, first of all, you need to know your audience. You need to have either customer avatars or you need to have your target audience, their pains, fears, hopes and desired nailed so that you know how to speak to them effectively so that they get hooked. Also, you need to know your product and its main features and benefits because without that, you're not going to be able to build uh, enough desire and to basically make the argument for them to buy. And third, you also need to know why your product is different from all the others, why uh, it's awesome, and what is your unique selling proposition that you do better than somebody else. Okay, so uh, with that out of the way, let's get into this sales page and I will break down every single element that's here and the specific reasons behind them. So first of all, we have a top navigation here. And this is just to give some quick context to people. And as you can see, there's a button here. Now, not many people uh, use this actually. However, what happens if somebody lands on your page who's already ready to buy, who has been exposed to your stuff previously? Well, in that case, you have this button here. You just click it and bam, the visitor goes directly to the buy button. So. That's a really nice thing to have here, but it's not mandatory. It's just something more advanced. But what is mandatory is a headline element that hooks people's attention and immediately grabs them. 
So in this case, as you can see, this is uh, more of a complex headline element. I'm not going to go into use headlines specifically. I'm going to have a detailed video about it uh, later on. But uh, just know that this headline uh, isn't random. It's, uh, it uses elements which I know that are important to my target audience, which in this case are online entrepreneurs, such as probably you are, uh, who want to leverage the power of email marketing or, or who want to upgrade their copywriting skills in uh, emails. By the way, you can check out the entire page in more detail uh, by clicking on the link below. I'll leave some links to it. So don't worry about that. Secondly, uh, as you'll notice throughout this page, uh, there are a lot of these uh, subheadlines uh, and these elements that just grab people's attention again. And they basically break up the text into manageable chunks because most of the people will be scrolling through this. And as you can see, as I'm scrolling through this, uh, there's always something to grab my attention. I mean, chances are very slim that everybody is going to read every single word of what you say or write here. So uh, just uh, use a lot of subheads, no matter the page, landing page or sales page that you're, you're writing because they're very important. So the first major element, apart from the headline that we have, is something called a big bold statement. And this is important because it uh, gets people's attention again. You might have noticed that I, I, I say get their attention all the time because this is that important. I mean, today uh, in the online world, you know specifically how uh, easy it is for people to get distracted by a random cat video or something. So you need something that uh, immediately builds some interest in them. And if, uh, and hopefully because they're, they're my target market, they're even slightly interested in email marketing or they've heard about it a little bit, uh, they will uh, be a little bit curious about this thing here. Oh, so what's this email marketing about? And in this part, I'm also qualifying a lot of people. So it's not enough for me to just talk to my avatar that I've envisioned. I also want to include as many people as possible and that's why these ORs are for. And as I move through the text, uh, you might notice that I uh, highlight the importance of this topic because uh, uh, maybe these people don't really know what email marketing is or how powerful it is. They don't know the return on investment on email marketing. And for these people who are uh, unaware of the problems in their business, the problem meaning that they're not using email marketing, uh, I speak to those people in this part. On the other hand, people who already know about this, they're gonna skip through it, but you'll still get some validation from them because they'll say, oh, okay, so this guy knows what he's talking about. Moving forward, we introduce an evil villain. And uh, you might ask, why do I do that? Well, it's simple. When I was studying evolutionary biology and psychology, there was a whole lot of literature about how we as humans are tribal animals, even still. And uh, we've basically, our brains basically evolved in smaller groups where there were us and they were them. And this is also present nowadays, basically wherever we look, uh, in movies, in the news, especially on YouTube, there's always some tribe and there's always some rival tribe. So um, with this thing, I position, I, I start to build something against an evil villain who is misleading my ideal client because there is and there are a lot of things actually that are misleading them in their efforts to grow their business. And uh, I've included five different things here. First of all, a lot of people talk about Facebook ads and Facebook ads are all the rage. Of course, they're super important, but it's not the end all be all. Then there are people who always talk about Instagram. Then there are people who want to uh, get you to create some chatbots. Then there are people who are always obsessed with uh, affiliate marketing. And there are always people who want to do some webinars or live videos on Facebook or stuff like that. Now, I'm not saying that these aren't important. They are, but they're just tactics. And it turns out you can check it out yourself. You can just Google it. 
email marketing has a much higher return on investment than all of these. It has a much, much higher return on investment because it's more personal, especially in this day of age. People still check their emails. Email isn't dying. Don't worry about this. And it's a great way to uh, get a list of people that you can communicate with a little bit more intimately. And also one important thing to note here, you own your email list. You don't own your messenger list. You don't own Facebook ads. You don't even own the videos on YouTube basically, but you own your email list. So this is a huge asset. Moving forward, as I presented the evil villain, I make one more case about email marketing and why they should care about it. So for the people who are still not convinced about the benefits of email marketing, I describe some high level benefits of it and how it can uh, give them more opportunities to grow their business, how it can unlock new revenue streams. And again, I also qualify people here because I say no matter what you sell, if it's e-commerce, if it's a SaaS product, if it's a consulting service, maybe an online course, or if they're a copywriter and they just want to learn better emails, email marketing will still work for them and mastering it will be a huge asset to them. But there's a problem. And the problem is that most people are afraid to do new stuff. And most people have low self-esteem about trying out new opportunities or maybe they've been burned before by something. There are a lot of charlatans out there, as I mentioned uh, a little bit uh, before. And uh, I wanna make sure that I'm addressing this before even moving to my offer because uh, I have a much higher chance of losing these people who are slightly interested, but uh, I don't really have their their, uh, intrigue just yet. So I want to preemptively address some of their objections Uh, As you can see here, I have a few things that I've personally heard people say about emails because a lot of people think that they need to have uh, expert writing skills for this. A lot of people seem to think that uh, they'll they'll be seen as spammy if they uh, write emails to their email list or they just don't want to fail. I mean, most of the population is uh, risk avoidance. So uh, based on these things, I make the case that even if they're afraid, it's not your, uh, it's not their fault. And this is a very important thing to do because a lot of people um, blame themselves for failing at something or for not being successful at something. And uh, it's very important in any sales message to let them know that it's not their fault. They didn't have the correct information. They've been misled by so-called experts. Uh, or they were just not ready to do something and it doesn't mean that they shouldn't try again. So uh, I make the case that uh, yes, this is a complicated thing to figure out. However, they should definitely make a case against it and they should definitely try again. And at this point, they're probably thinking that, yeah, there is some truth to it, but but where do I start? I mean, who do I listen to? Do I listen to this guy who wants to eventually sell me or something? And that's the the, the exact place where I uh, leverage the evil villain again, but more specifically. So I introduce five types of uh, people, charlatans, who are using email marketing all wrong. And uh, as you can see, I've also included some funny pictures and I've made up some names for them so that I get pe- so that I keep people's attention. And that way the whole message seems more relatable. And uh, sometimes introducing some, some humor or lightheartedness is definitely a good thing in any types of sales message and if you want to do marketing more effectively. So I have the bullhead pyromancer. I mean, come on. I have the fancy fish I have the big number guy. I I, I bet everybody knows about this guy. Uh, You know, uh, Ty Lopez wannabes uh, flashing in their Lambos that they've rented or just, uh, you know, found it in the parking lot and they make some pictures with it and they try to sell you something that you're going to be super rich overnight by buying this. No, it obviously there's no such thing as that. But um, there are a lot of people who are are selling snake oil, unfortunately. And I just want to point this out. There's also the Morty 
and the milking machines. So all these people are trying to um, basically approach email marketing from the wrong perspective that might be able to damage the reputation or the credibility of my ideal customer. So I want to spare them from that. And only then do I introduce myself, not even my offering, but myself actually. And there's a section here. There's also a little bit of video. There's a section about who I am, what I've done, a few credentials, maybe a few screenshots, a little bit of story about how I started, how I've mastered the craft, uh, how I've learned a lot of things about human decision making, persuasion psychology, and sending high converting emails that work. And uh, as you can see, I've included a lot, some graphs here as well. Uh, and this is an important part. I don't just uh, offer them uh, my solution right off the bat. No, I make sure to use uh, some sort of transition between the hook, uh, the, the previous elements that I've used to build a little bit of attention for what I want to say, and my offering, which is going to be the uh, solution to my audience's problems. So uh, this part is a little bit of a transition. You can make this much longer as well. However, in this case, I felt that uh, the sales page is already long enough, so it's going to be totally fine. And then I introduce my offer, Rainmaker Email Mastery. Under it, my unique selling proposition. The easiest no-nonsense system to confidently and consistently sell more with emails using my elegant persuasion framework. And as you might uh, notice, there's, there are a lot of things going on here. Like I have a unique attribute uh, added to my course in the sense that it's the easiest. It's no nonsense. So I'm appealing to practical people who want a system that works, that isn't just theory. I say that it's a system because it's not just a course. It's a system full of worksheets, full of formulas, full of bonuses that help you uh, write an email from start to, to finish and give you basically a, a, a whole framework that you can use repeatedly. Then sell more with emails. This is what my audience wants at the end of the day. And I also had something unique, uh, something that shows that this course is uh, different from anything else because it uses my elegant persuasion framework. So, uh, I'm a really strong believer of not being overly salesy or uh, or overly aggressive in marketing messages. And actually, the whole course is based on the notion that you don't have to uh, be like those aggressive uh, ClickBank sellers. Sorry if you're a ClickBank seller. Most of them, unfortunately, are just blasting their list with uh, sleazy messages that obviously don't work or they simply get marked as spam. So I have some nice uh, mock-ups here that I've made, you know, it's for people to just see what's inside the course because then they can identify with it much easier. And then also a picture of me, uh, a little bit of overview, and then I get to the desire building part for which I use a lot of bullets. And this is the place where uh, knowing the difference between benefits and uh, features is a very important thing because the features of my product is that it has two and a half hours of video lessons. It has worksheets. It has five bonuses. It has, uh, you know, uh, formulas that people can use. It has like 500 uh, email subject line uh, formulas that people can use. But at the end of the day, people are always asking, yeah, but what's in it for me? And I want to give them benefits, specific benefits that will help them and uh, that will give them something measurable. And uh, I've included a lot of bullets here broken down by modules. So there are three modules in this course. And each lesson includes four bullets with some visual elements here. So this is a typical benefit-driven bullet here. Watch as I unravel six compelling reasons as to why now is actually the best time to go all in with email marketing, even if you think it's too late for that. Hint, it's not. And this appeals to people who think that, uh, yeah, email is dead. They should, uh, they should focus on messenger lists uh, only because that's the future. Hint, it's not actually. Email is still kicking and alive. 
And as you can see, there are a lot of bullets here, which uh, isn't a problem. Don't be afraid to use a lot of bullets because you never know which one catches people's attention and which one they can identify with in their unique situation. So I have bullets here uh, based on this lesson about lowering their uncertainty. This is a typical benefit here on how to create their ideal cast customer avatar on uh, uncovering their uh, ideal customer's core buying behaviors or uh, discover a weird but surprisingly effective mental concept called the rule of one that when applied will turn each sales message you write into a moving experience for the reader. So at this point, people want to know what's the rule of one? What's this, uh, what's this powerful thing here? So make sure to include a lot of bullets here. Uh, and I will do uh, another video sometime in the near future about bullets because they're very powerful for anything. They're invaluable for opt-in pages, for landing pages, for sales pages, even for emails, even for product descriptions. They all use bullets. So uh, make sure to also use them in your own sales messages. Then I have um, the same thing for module two. Then I have the same thing for module three. And then I present, I just break up the things a little bit because it's starting to become a little bit monotone. So I also highlight the fact that I have three in-depth, no fluff, no bullshit, practical workbooks, because this, again, this isn't a theoretical course. This is a, this is a framework that's basically you can do in an afternoon and it will teach you to go from zero to a full fledged, high converting and profitable email. Um, and then I also build more desire by describing my bonuses, of which there are five. Uh, you can read all of these here. The idea is that um, if you have bonuses and you should have bonuses, uh, you should definitely highlight their value because for some reason people like bonuses. They, they want to get stuff extra, you know, uh, even though the core part of the course itself is kick-ass and it can stand on its own. I've also included five powerful bonuses because I just want to over deliver on this one. Okay. I just want to give some, uh, extended things to people that they can use to make their lives even easier and to make writing this email even easier. So a lot of people, unfortunately, uh, they, create a course and then half of it, they say it's the core modules and half of it, they deliver as bonuses. Don't do that. Uh, that's just scammy. It tricks people to actually getting less content than they, that they could, uh, make sure to over deliver on your core offer and then add something else as bonuses. So this is very important and people will appreciate it. And then this is a very important part here. After all that I've done, grab their attention. Uh, hook them emotionally, built some credibility for myself, highlighted some common pitfalls and presented my offer with uh, uh, desire building bullets. Now I go on and uh, do something called future pacing, which is a little bit more advanced thing in uh, persuasion psychology. And it basically means that I present an ideal picture. I paint the dream of the, of my ideal customer after they've invested in this course, after they've done it, after they wrote that email and uh, they've become much more comfortable and actually after they've managed to grow their business with this. So uh, I'm not going to read this right now, but the idea is, th is that you uh, paint the dream of how their life is going to look like after your offering. It gives them freedom, it gives them money, it gives them good feelings. And this is very important because at this point, people are obviously interested, but they cannot really imagine themselves in the same shoes. They will think that, okay, it's easy for you, Chaba. I mean, you're a conversion copywriter. You do this for a living. Uh, how can I do this? I'm not a writer. But the idea is that they can do it. Uh, the system gives them everything they need to do it and they better believe that their life can change for the better after they apply the system. You know, there's also a, a picture here that symbolizes freedom. And after this point, they might think that, okay, this is too good to be true. So what's the catch? And this is the best place to use a, a guarantee. And I highly encourage you that, especially if you're selling info products, but even for physical products, you should definitely have a guarantee. Uh, ideally 30 days or maybe even 60 days. 
um, because it's it's scientifically proven to raise and to increase sales by uh, around 50%, let's say. And sure, you're gonna have some refund rates, uh, but it's going to be far, far less than the extra amount of revenue that you're generating because of it, okay? So uh, in this case, I took the time to give them a more special type of guarantee. I've described some things here. I've built some more credibility about my offering. So don't just say, uh, if you don't like it, uh, send me an email and I'll give you your money back. Everybody does this. You can go the extra mile and uh, just uh, just uh, make it more specific, okay? You can even uh, describe some potential situations that they can be in and how they can still get their money back if they want. And this is the perfect place to uh, introduce the price because obviously the price is going to be the biggest objection here for everything that you wanna sell people. And uh, this is the best place because at this point, if they're reading this, they're obviously interested, you've built some desire and they wanna know how much it, it costs. And when people read uh, a price, it's, uh, it's a well-known scientific fact that uh, some uh, areas light up in their brain that are the same as pain signaling. So. A lot of people, when we see prices, we feel it as some sort of emotional pain. It's the same thing, actually. So uh, don't just give them the price upfront, except uh, if you know that they're a very warm audience and they just want to know how much something costs. Uh, and a pro tip for you, it's uh, good to include two prices here. Uh, and as you can see, there's a standard edition and there's also an ultimate edition, which basically includes one hour of personal consulting uh, with yours truly, so that means me. Um, it's, a, it's a very good deal because uh, uh, apart from this course, if you wanna do coaching with me, it's more expensive. But in this package, it's more accessible for people who want you know, that extra personalized support. Maybe they have some extra questions about the course. Maybe they want, uh, to, want me to you know, look over their emails or to tear, tear down their campaign, something like that. And um, also by using two prices, um, you give people th the choice between the two prices because otherwise, if you have one price, their choice is to buy or not buy. This way, their choice is to buy this or buy that. So keep this in mind and be sure to use this because it's very powerful and it's proven to work across basically any industry. And at this point, uh, obviously, I'm going to have more objections. A lot of people will feel that, okay, is this right for me? For some reason, people have this thing called special snowflake syndrome. And um, a lot of people actually think that uh, this thing will not apply to their business because they're in this, they're in that or something. And uh, make sure to address this because... Uh, uh, I, what I found is that this is one of the biggest objections, regardless of what you sell. A lot of people are asking, is this right for me? Will this help me? Can I benefit from this? So usually start with this, but there are other questions here as, as well that I've encountered uh, over, over some months. Uh, obviously you can always tweak this. So as you discover more and more objections that come up all the time, you can add them here. Just, you know, add some little bit of, uh, dynamic element that's that's good to do. And after the fact, uh, I have, uh, you know, testimonials, which is obviously the best type of social proof. Now, in this case, I have a few testimonials here. They're a little bit messed up right now. Sorry about that. But uh, uh, I have basically all my testimonials in one place here, but feel free to spread them out. You can include some of them, uh, f uh, you know, earlier. You can include some of them uh, after the price, before the price, at the end of it, however you like, I've included them here, but uh, you have many choices for this one. And next up, because we're still not done, but don't worry because we're getting there. Uh, I have one more critical element here, which is to position my product against the competition. Because at this point, people are obviously interested. They've seen the price. You might have even uh, answered some of their objections. But the problem is that there are so many other competitors out there. So why shouldn't they just, uh, you know, go to Udemy and buy a course for $10, which 
apparently does the same thing according to descriptions. Well, this is what this major part solves. It presents several options that they can do and how your option is better. So in my case, option one is to figure out everything on their own, which is fine, doable, but it will take them years to learn how to write emails like that. Do they have the time? I don't know. Then we have option uh, two, which is to get help from specialized copywriters and always uh, write emails with their help, which is uh, fine usually, but the problem is that this can get very, very expensive. And also uh, the, be the good copywriters are hard to get a hold of. And uh, you know, you can find a lot of writers for 10, $20 an hour, but the problem is that they're far from being copywriters, okay? Don't even hire anyone who's under $100 per hour as a copywriter because they don't really know what they're doing. Um, then we have option th three, which is to uh, basically buy a cheap generic Udemy course. Uh, I'm sure you've seen ads for Udemy or Skillshare or places like this. Uh, they're fine, they're very good for, uh, you know, introductory courses. But the problem is that they're just that usually. You can find some gems here as here and there, but uh, usually they're cheap and generic. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they can definitely do that. And if they want to do that, that's totally fine. However, in that case, uh, they're not going to be, you know, a loyal customer either way. So, you know, it's okay for you to let them go. Uh, there's also option four, which is to read a bunch of free articles on Google, which a lot of people again do. But uh, the problem with this is that there's a lot of misinformation in there, especially in online marketing, especially in sales. Uh, so people might get confused by it. And it also takes a lot of effort. They have to know exactly how to find the right things. But there's option five, which you've guessed it, is Remake Email Mastery. Uh, which they can try risk-free. So always reinforce these core benefits or that there's a money-back guarantee because it gives you more credibility and people won't feel that, uh, you know, what if this is a, a scam? Hint, it's not a scam, but still a lot of people, you know, want to have that extra reassurance. And if you have a quality product, you should stand by it. You should offer a money-back guarantee because uh, you're proud of it and you know that it works. So uh, there's always going to be some people who cancel, but hey, I mean, that's just business. And then the last part is one last try to persuade them, basically not being needy, but uh, letting them go, letting them make their own decisions and uh, leaving it to their conscience to decide while making an argument for why, uh, you know, making a move, taking the action, is the right thing to do now, but if not, it's okay, we'll still part as friends. This is actually very powerful and a lot of people will be, you know, persuaded by this final element here. And after it, I have one more, uh, you know, pricing table because a lot of people will just uh, scroll to the bottom uh, and uh, they might just buy it right away or, uh, you know, they might have missed the other one. So this gives you another opportunity to get the sale, which is uh, what we want. So, yeah. And finally, you know, some disclaimer here, which is, I think it's mandatory for, for uh, everyone. So yeah, that's that for the sales page. Again, I will just do a high level rundown of all the things here. Um, first, I have a top element, which is for people who want to buy right off the bat. Then I have a headline element which grabs attention. Then I have a big bold statement which uh, you know builds a case for why email marketing is important. Then I want to highlight a few pitfalls in this industry that you know discourage people from email marketing and why it's a mistake. Then I have uh, uh, a little bit of uh, desire building for email marketing, why it's so valuable and why people should use it. Next up, there's uh, a little bit of preemptive objection handling uh, because a lot of people are afraid to try out new things. So I counter this. I go back again to the evil villain and present five types of uh, so-called experts who uh, might have misled them before or who are capable of definitely misleading them uh, even today. So after it, I uh, present myself and why I'm legit. After it, I present the offer and I use a lot of desire building bullets because you never know which one's going to connect. You never know, uh, and I'm not kidding with this, 
which bullet is going to be the final nail in the coffin, which one is going to cause the reader to say, okay, yes, I want that. So be sure to include a lot of bullets here and then spice things up with any other bonus or, or other element that you have, you know, uh, highlight the, the power of these bonuses. After it, you want to build, uh, you know, further desire and uh, describe their ideal situation after they've uh, uh, had some time with your product and after they've went through it. Then the guarantee, which is very important. Uh, pricing table, fact, because at this point people are going to have questions and they're going to feel like this is not for them or, uh, or I don't know, how long do they have access and things like that. Testimonials, which is very important because it's one of the best types of social proof. Then you have, uh, you know, uh, the element that contrasts your course with anything else that's out there and basically shows why you're unique and why people should uh, take this instead of buying a Udemy course or researching things on their own on Google. Um, and then there's the final push for people. I mean, it's not a push. It's not aggressive. And don't make this aggressive, please. Don't make it like they feel bad about themselves. Just uh, highlight the fact that why making decisions is actually the good thing and that why there's, there's no risk for them at the end of the day because they are covered by a money-back guarantee. And then one more pricing table. And that's pretty much it. You can add other types of dynamic elements to this. You can definitely add a chat box here in the lower right corner. There are some uh, social proof plugins that you can add in the bottom left corner. It's a really good place that shows that X and, X, X and Y uh, purchased the course, you know, just 10 minutes ago. Just give you some extra social proof. You can add uh, dynamic countdown timers here so that, you know, you get, give people some extra uh, scarcity. And I do have a version of this sales page, which also has a big, bold uh, countdown timer here. Um, but it's not really mandatory. You can do that with other uh, ways as well. So yeah, I will also include the list that you can quickly watch over in the description below. Make sure to check it out if you just want the formula. But uh, I do uh, recommend that you take some time and look over this page as well because you will find a lot of uh, gold nuggets that you can even use. Just don't copy it. Just don't plagiarize it, please. But uh, the structure and everything you can definitely mimic. And if by some chance I've managed to persuade you with it and you want to send better emails, just feel free to you know enroll in the course. As I said, and as you know, probably it's risk-free. If you, if you think that it can help you, just feel free and I will welcome you inside. And that's it. Now you also have everything you need to write an awesome high converting sales page that will get you more sales if you sell something online. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Just click on the subscribe button right below. Also, if you want exclusive copywriting and conversion optimization tips that I only share with my subscribers, head over to gameofconversions.com and subscribe to my ever-growing conversion toolbox. It's free. And now I want to turn it over to you. Which of the tips mentioned in this video are you going to use first? Refining your hooks so that they connect with your audience emotionally, or maybe including more desire building bullets, or maybe something else. Let me know by leaving a comment below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.